Hi, so today what we're going to be looking at is OAuth 2.0 JSON Web Token Bearer Flow for server-to-server -server integration. Um, so this would be, sometimes you want access um, to data without interactively logging in each time and allowing two servers to interchange information, exchange information. So that's why we need this JSON Web Token Bearer Flow. Um, the flow uses a certificate uh, to sign the JSON Web Token request, and it doesn't need the user to actually click anything uh, and unauthorize anything. So a good example would be you have a, um, a service that wants to reach into Salesforce on a nightly basis, uh, doing a batch report, for example. The way that we do that is going to be as follows. However, I don't have that external service, so I'm actually using Salesforce, a different Salesforce org as that second server. Um, there are other easier and quicker ways to do two Salesforce server to server integrations, but this is just an example without another server. So first of all, I've got my parent uh, org here, which is the one that's going to be making the call out. This is my uh, service and this is my Salesforce org, for example. What I want to do is I want to go to my Salesforce org and I want to go to certificates uh, and key management and create a self-signed uh, certificate here. I then want to export to key store and once I click export to key store, I can um, give it a key store password. This then um, exports, it'll download a, um, JS a Java key store uh, file, which I can then upload either to my certificate and key management in my service org we'll call it or your uh, you can use it for your um, your external service what you then want to do is create a, um, a, a connected app a general connected app info here Callback URL needs to be a secure callback URL. However, we're lucky we've got one at Salesforce anyway. Um, giving it the correct OAuth scopes and making sure that you require a secret um, for both server web, web server flow and refresh token flow. Um, here, using the digital signatures, what I want to do here is uh, upload the certificate self-certificate from the service that is going to be um, reaching into this org. So you can either do that by using OpenSSL um, and creating one command line interface on your machine or in Salesforce again, I've created a self-signed cert here, uh, downloaded that, which you can do by just clicking into it and downloading the certificate and then I've uploaded it to this managed connect, uh, this connected app sorry um then from there what i want to do is i want to click save i want to click manage at the top there and then i want to go on to edit policies once i click edit policies i want to choose um, admin approved users may pre-authorize rather than all users may self-authorize um if we have this one uh, the user does have to do, uh, has to interact first to authorize, and then thereafter it does not need user interaction. Or if we choose this one, uh, what we can then do is we can assign it via profile or permission set, meaning that there is no need for user interaction at all other than this first setup step here. Now that's the child, that's the uh, the org setup that's going to be uh, reached out to by a service, by another server. Um, and the way that we're going to do that from our Salesforce server is we're going to create um, some Apex code here. So I've got my um, class and controller, uh, a constructor even. So what I'm doing here is I've using the auth class and the JSON Web Token method. Um, which is uh, provided to us by Salesforce in the Apex library. I'm then setting the subject, uh, which is my username in my Salesforce org, the child org, the one that I'm reaching out to to get the information, the one that I'm reaching out to to get this uh, nightly report, for example. This would be what your app could do or your, your server could do. Um, the audience is login.salesforce.com and the issuer here is the connected apps um, public key, uh, consumer key. What I'm also doing is I'm 
utilizing the cell sign certificate here, the one that I've uploaded that belongs to the um, th this org, the one that I'm going to use to sign. And I then uh, serialize it and I use this endpoint to reach out to my um, connected app uh, and using this username. So if I then, um, so I just put here to see the see it gets to this point, uh, we're going to debug the access token. However, it's not going to provide the access token because uh, for security it'll be removed, but we'll be able to see that it actually happens. So I'm just going to call my controller um, and then what we will see here in the debug logs is it will appear that it has reached out and there has been something to come back. We've got something in the debug log. Obviously the session ID is removed because for security it does that in the debug logs. Um, but what I can do is go over to my org, have a look in the login history and what you'll be able to see if I give that a refresh. What we can see here is the time is in fact 9.19 so a couple of seconds ago it was a successful remote access using OAuth 2.0 uh, using my application, my connected app. Uh, and you can see it actually used the login URL there. We could use our my domain if we wanted to also. Um, point to note is that in your Apex code, for example, or if you're um, on your server, wherever the origin is that you're reaching out to, um, so you need to go in, you need to, if you're doing it for um, Salesforce, I, I had to create a remote site setting um, just to detail that obviously this is an authorized endpoint that I'm going to go to. I hope that was useful. I hope that made sense and it was a little demonstration on how we can use um, the OAuth 2.0 JSON web token bearer flow for a service to server integration, but also how we can actually do a Salesforce to Salesforce integration utilizing the two Salesforce servers. Thanks for watching and until next time, goodbye.